from the we the people, sort of the the concept that we are, you know, we uh, operate on the consent of the governed and that our rights are unalienable rights, we kind of shifted from that to a dependence upon the government and uh, these, the, you know, a rule by an elite. Mm -hmm. And while we've had uh, intermittent periods of where we've sort of walked away from that and turned back to what our founding principles were, like with certainly with uh, guys like Eisenhower and Ronald Reagan and, and George W. Bush, I think that uh, fundamentally we've been on a, in a trend of moving away from our founding principles, uh, certainly since Roosevelt. Do you think it'll ever be turned around? Can we get back to the grassroots of, of democracy and build a solid democracy where the American public can actually stand up and say what they want to say without having the fear of Big Brother, you know, clobbering them on the head for going after some little religious organization or a major philosophy like the uh, like the um, the the Muslim extremists that are out there. You know, I think that, uh, and and a lot of people will not like my answer on this. It's very important to understand that once you get 51% of, of the American public on the government dole, they're getting some kind of check from the government, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost impossible to ever turn that, to turn it back. As, historically, you just don't turn away from, you know, from that kind of uh, social situation or political situation. Now... We're not there yet. We're coming on. We're coming to that point. We're not there yet. So there's still a chance that we can turn this around. But one of the things that I think will turn this around is going to be uh, something that we're not going to like, and it's going to be some kind of disaster. And and it's going to be a you know a, a EMP. You know EMP doesn't have to be a nuclear weapon. It That's can right. come from the atmosphere. And uh, we're not prepared for an EMP, and it will knock us back over a hundred years. Uh, it could be an economic collapse. And, you know, the world economy is very fragile. That will knock us back. It could be a terrorist attack or it could be a, you know, a major storm or something. Mm -hmm. But something that devastating, I believe, will, will help to turn this country around. But the reason it will turn the country around is because it will turn us back to a reliance upon God unalienable rights, which was a founding principle of our forefathers as they established this nation and wrote a constitution. But General, you know, you've got so many so many Americans who are, are fighting so hard to have the right to bear arms. It's a big story in the U.S. right now. Other countries are watching. And, and the, there are so many Americans who are so passionate about having the right to, to carry a weapon having a right to carry a concealed weapon, having the right to to use these weapons under controlled circumstances. And yet, when it comes to other aspects, including the 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 issue of God, yeah. it, it's, it's like it doesn't exist. I cannot explain that, Rob. I can't I just don't understand it because the First Amendment, if you if you look at the history of the First Amendment, when our founding fathers, uh, after the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. when we were ultimately victorious over the British Empire, um, and they came back to Philadelphia to deal with uh, not the Constitution. They had already written that, but they came back to deal with the amendments to the Constitution, which were essential to the ultimate ratification of the Constitution. The first thing they dealt with was the, the freedom of religion. Now, some people, if I said freedom of worship, they would say, yep, that's right, and that's not right. It was freedom of religion, meaning I can believe what I want to believe, but I can also live it. I can mm -hmm. speak about it. I can take it into the public square. And then the next thing they did in the very same amendment was they gave us the freedom of speech and then the freedom of assembly. What were they doing? It was all tied together. Now, the Second Amendment was about the right to keep and bear arms. People are so much more focused today on the Second Amendment, which was obviously not the priority That's right. to the Founding Fathers. It was important, but it wasn't the priority. And today in America, 
we are uh, we are letting the erosion of our uh, First Amendment rights uh, go almost unimpeded. Uh, but you you attack the Second Amendment and people come unglued, they're ready to fall out into the streets and and start marching and demonstrating. But the First Amendment, uh, which uh, is just puzzling to me, there's just not enough people that are willing to stand up and fight for it. Yeah, you can you can take the Bible out of my school. You can take the Bible out of my hotel. You can take the Bible out of the bookstores. But God damn it, don't touch my weapon. Absolutely, and that's exactly the way that it's yeah. unfolding right now. It's pretty sad, but you know there is a there is a there is a a silver lining to this cloud, General, and I'd like to point it out at this time. You, you're there. You're not only a lieutenant general who's retired after a long distinguished service, but now you're you're leading a warrior. You're leading, I'm sorry, warriors through your through your ministry. And Exo Nation, when we come back from this news break at the bottom of the hour. We're going to continue this conversation with our special guest of this hour, Lieutenant General William G. Boykin, who is now retired from the military. And now he's, um, he's serving in another army, God's army, www.kingdomwarriors.net. My name's Rob McConnell, and this is The Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, and The Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. And then the show is repeated in its entirety six times over the 24-hour period so that each and every one of our networks around the world can get the message to you. Now, if you would like to send me an email with your, with your comments, if there's a special guest you'd like us to get on, it's very simple, xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with General Boykin as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Hi, this is Rob McConnell just letting you know that the X Chronicles newspaper is now available online at www.xzonebookclub.com. All past editions and current editions of the X Chronicles newspaper are available for 99 cents. That's www.xzonebookclub.com and that's 99 cents US per edition. And don't forget, the X Zone store is now open as well for all of your X Zone Nation merchandise www.thexzonestore.com Do you have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L I T E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. www.kingdomwarriors.net is the website where you can find out more about Lieutenant General Boykin. He was in the army, and now he's in another army. He is a real onward Christian soldier. Uh, General, before we get into the um, into the ministerial side uh, of what you're doing now and how people can get involved and, and become members of your army this time, um, I'd like to ask you your opinion on What's happening on the border in the southern part of the United States between the United States and Mexico? 
Yeah, Rob, thanks. Uh, that's a very important issue. Um, as I said, we've been watching ISIS for over a decade. Well, the reality is uh, ISIS, as well as other terrorist groups like uh, uh, Hezbollah and Hamas, have infiltrated America across our southern borders. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we know that? First of all, Robert Mueller, the former FBI director, testified uh, about five or six years ago and, and told America that we had terrorist cells that had come across the southern border out of Mexico uh, and were setting up in America. And then of, of late, the Border Patrol has uh, made several announcements that they are finding Korans, prayer rugs, and terrorist oh training manuals in the wadis on the border of uh, New Mexico uh, as well as uh, Arizona and Texas. So um, we know that they are coming across our border. We know that they're coming with nefarious intent. What we don't know precisely is what they're bringing across that border. So it's a very dangerous situation, and it's all the more reason that America needs to get serious about sealing our borders because we do have terrorists coming across those borders. You know, I was speaking to... Um Jim Gilchrist, who is the founder and president of the of the Minuteman Project, and you know, I can understand his his frustration. I can I can understand his concerns. Why doesn't the government enact? Uh, you know, use the national get the national guard out there, have the president put them under federal jurisdiction, and uh, even if the local sheriffs have to have to deputize people to protect the border. Why doesn't the Army, the Navy, the United States Marine Force, or other members of Homeland Security get involved? Like, isn't this a war we're fighting? Well, it certainly is from my perspective. But the, our current administration uh, sees this as a way of not only getting the Hispanic vote in America, which ah. is really, you know, the Hispanic population in America is... Uh, ultimately will will uh, exceed that of the uh, Caucasians. Now, uh, the second thing is the more of these folks that you bring in that are indebted to a one party here, with that being the Democratic Party, the, mm -hmm. certainly the, the more votes you're going to get and the bigger voter base you're going to have for that party uh, for a long time. And that's really what it's all about, and uh, they're succeeding. Let me ask you, do you think that this is the decision that President Obama is making as the President of the United States, or are there, is, is there a shadow government that is actually saying, hey, listen, if we, if we, if we keep the borders open, we let more people in, uh, you know, you grant them amnesty, and what you're doing is you're ensuring the, the succession of the party for the next, what, 20, 30 years? Absolutely. And uh, look, I, first of all, I think that the shadow government in America are the special interest groups. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are Marxist groups uh, supported and funded by uh, George Soros. Uh, there are others with different agendas. And if there is such a thing as a shadow government, it's the people in these special interest groups that have so much influence on our president and his closest advisors. Uh, like you know, like Valerie Jarrett and others, and uh, they really are influencing the direction of this country. And you're seeing now, though, that none of these special interest groups have any understanding of foreign policy or national security. As a result of that, our foreign policy is in a shambles, mm -hmm. and our national security is suffering because none of them have experience in it, nor do they know how to advise the president on this. And he hasn't reached out to people who, even within his own party, who really do have a better grasp of foreign policy and national security. Um, I was speaking to someone in the intelligence community yesterday, and they say we're saying that they have they have un they have reports that they could not confirm or deny at that point that there have been jihadists uh, from ISIS believed to be in Tijuana presently. Yeah, uh, it's actually Juarez. I don't think it's, I don't know about Tijuana, oh, okay, but Juarez I'm... is on the Texas border. Right. And Juarez is right across from Fort Bliss, which is...